Hello everybody, Willie the Bam Johnson inside the dojo. Of course y'all can see me sweating a little bit and you can also see right up there the Warriors Mindset. You know a lot of people probably don't know what the Warriors Mindset is but Warriors Mindset is having that stick to ofness, that attitude, that spirit within to hang in there regardless of how bad things may get, how much adversity might come your way. With a certain set of principles, I believe like 12 principles or so in life, honesty, open-mindedness, willingness, and we can even say self-evaluation, that's just four. You gotta come, come back to me to get the rest of them. But if we work on those four, they can build the foundation for us to learn how to get through whatever's coming our way. You know, it doesn't eliminate the pressures and the problems of what the world brings to us, but it does allow us to find a way to dig down inside. As Marshall was say, three inches below the belly button and push it out, grit it out. Give it, face it, let it go. And after working on this program, you know, based on my years of experience in martial arts and just the ups and downs of life, everyday life, I was able to structure a program, thank you God, giving me this, this path to be able to share with other people. And we happened to stumble across each other. Yeah, tell them your story. Give them the intro. Tell them, tell them how, how did this even come about with our relationship based on this warrior's mindset? Well, my son was in town from Denver. I'm sorry, cut. Have to introduce himself. Yeah, you got to give him an intro. Yeah. Oh, okay. You sign everything. Okay. No, I'm saying he has to introduce himself and you have to introduce him to the camera. Right. That, okay. Are you going to introduce me or you want me to introduce myself? I want you to introduce yourself. <laughs> so okay. we're going we're gonna to flow with warrior's mindset. And because it's like when I was at a spiritual meeting and, you know, things I go to, been going through on a regular basis, and I just happened to be sitting there. And what happened? Well, my name's Mike McCall, and uh, I was uh, at, a, at this spiritual meeting with my son, yeah. and um, you were there, you came in a little late, and I felt led to say something to you because what you said was uh, really touched my heart because I'm involved with Central Union Mission in Washington, D.C., which is a homeless shelter that has a component in it called the Spiritual Transformation Program. And so we have men who, not all the men that come in uh, the homeless shelter, but about a third of them voluntarily choose to be a part of this program. So they can uh, regain their life from drugs and alcohol. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And what you said really uh, caused me to think, hey, maybe you could say something to my men yes, sir, yes, sir. that would help them and give them a better perspective on what they do, not only to get right, but to stay right. right because right. it seemed to me like everything you were saying was about not just getting right, right. but staying right. Right, and, and, and it's funny because I, I think it didn't just happen, I mean, through a couple of filling out processes, I think, I believe that God guides us and shows us where the answers are at, and you just want to fill things out, and I think that's kind of like how connection went, a call, and I mean, well, I gave you my card, and like I always do, just to make sure the other person's serious, I don't harass them. Yes, sir. Yes, I gave him the card, I gave you my card, and I said, look, if you think you might want to be helping us out, yes, sir. give me a call. Yes. And so, actually, my son Mike said, did he call? Did he call? I said, no, no. I'm just going to wait. Yes. And sure yes. enough, two weeks later, you called, yes, sir. and we met, and then we seemed to grow from there. Yeah. And... Um, you yeah. met my son too, though, right? Oh yes, that was uh, what really got kind of experience. experience. Oh, that was awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys are right out of the same same mold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and to see the emotion and the seriousness with which you approach this, and then hearing your testimony. Yes, sir. Because all these guys have similar testimonies. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, sir. Uh, you know, and it's not about comparing testimonies in terms of who had the harshest time. It's all about Recovery. Yes, sir. What are you yes, going to do now, moving forward? So, uh, long story short, we came up with this idea that over a three-month period, I would bring my men here to your school uh, once a month for an hour in the morning, 7 a.m. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> and so, I would bring them here, and then you would put them through the paces. You would talk to them a little bit, you know, give them some things to... Be, to, to do you know with their body because one of the things that is not done at the mission it's usually all about the spiritual which is great yes, sir. Yes, you know sir. infusing the word of God hiding it in your heart mm -hmm. uh, and so you know but the physical you know the discipline yeah. necessary yes, with actually walking that out yes, in the sir. world yes, sir. you seem to have figured out a way to do that through your 
program due to the warrior mindset. And so the guys were just excited just to come over. Yeah. And then when you opened up the goodie box to them and told them about what was going on, uh, that was just awesome. So they were just loving that. And so we're about ready to do it again. Another we're gonna, one, yeah. We're yeah. gonna reload and do it again. And, and you know what's so awesome? I remember when I was incarcerated, um, guy by the name of Brother D, you know, I went to this guy with an ask, you know, for a solution to help me get my life in order. And I had this idea, this crazy program called Stronger Than Drugs. Because I, even though I didn't know what was wrong with me, I knew if I go back and talk to kids about what I did, which was stupid and ignorant and selfish, maybe they wouldn't make those same mistakes. And he said, yeah, come to a meeting. The name of the meeting is called Who Are You? And what he wanted to tell me, who are you? You know, that's what we're saying. Who are you? Do you really know who you are? Those four principles allow us to find out who we are. Once we know who we are, we can go out and we can represent who we are. And that, that power of that, just like we talked about with the warrior's mindset, will motivate change. We don't have to talk about the change. We have to be the change. That's what a warrior is all about. Regardless of what happened, what goes on, we stick in there and we hang in there. And we know that God only gives us what we can bear. And that's what this warrior's mindset is all about. How would we believe, even when it, through that connection, would I believe that one day I would be talking to me? How, I mean, how is that even possible? Because the group was a man trying to show me how to be a man. I'm still trying to find out the answer to that, you know? Yeah, I'm sure. not, I'm not, we're not going to claim and say that we're there. No. I mean, would you agree, Mr. Mike? Well, Paul says, I was just thinking while you were talking, that uh, part of what the men get is they get the, the Bible or the Word of God in their head, and then it's a question of, okay, like you said, working it out. Yes, and Paul said, okay, not that I've attained anything, I don't claim to obtain anything, but I press on. I put my hand to the plow and keep going. And see, that's the kind of mindset, This and I never heard it referred to as warrior mindset. <laughs> that certainly works for me. Yeah, that's the yeah. kind of mindset that these men need because yeah. they're going to, Satan, his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes, sir. So if these guys don't have the armor of God on and they don't have that warrior mindset, they're going to be a casualty on the battlefield. Yes, so the combination of taking in the Word of God and getting this warrior mindset, it's the same spiritual principles. You know, we have the mind of Christ. I can do all things yes, through sir. Christ who yes, strengthens yes, us. But we have to have that mindset. Right. Right. And you just really right. nailed it for and, and, and for me, that's just because I don't want to be who I used to be anymore. Who, I mean, all those things, and you know that. All those things that I went through, you could think they're cool, you could think they're hip. Some kid out there think that, yeah, he was this, he was that. That guy that I went to, he had a stronger testimony than what I had. His testimony in the end made me believe that at the end, I was going to get something from him to make me a better guy on the street doing, doing, doing negativity. But he did give me the best package in the world. That was God. Yes, it is. And he didn't stake a claim of ownership to the word. Every time I tried to give it back to him, he said, hey. I'm just a messenger passing something through to you. Let it go. Don't give me. I'm not that powerful. And that's the same thing I think we are saying here. It's about freedom. It's about finding a way to tap into the strength. Everything that we need is inside of ourselves. For me, I had to be in a prison cell. You know, and, and it was it was awesome because he showed me. He said, well, look, Moses had to go to jail. I mean, uh, uh, T.D. Jake said there's more... Um, what is it? Convicts in the Bible than any other book written. I mean, is that correct, sir? <laughs> Moses spent 40 years on the back side of the desert. Joseph spent time in prison. Yes, sir. People promised him they'd get him out. They forgot him. <laughs> but God had him all the time. God had him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, I mean, I love you. You know that. I, I know that this is a, a blessing from God. I mean, and I say that to those men, the wealthiest possession that I could ever had is that relationship to share my story with those men. Because that was me. I was the man out there on the street, in the shelter, eating out the trash can. And so were they. Yes, sir. So they could relate. I could say that to them. But, you know, when you brought it, there was no question that you had lived it. Yes, sir. And they were like, oh my God. So you were talking right to them. And that's what they need to hear. And when I went to the awards banquet that you put on yes, there, and saw you mentioned about uh, us not meeting by accident. And the reason you said that is because I saw all the other people that were there that you had a connection with that God has brought into your life. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you actually saw God or Jesus in the flesh? Those people. Right. 
I've never seen Jesus in the flesh. I've never heard God. But I've seen him manifested through people. And we're in the presence. You know, uh, take off your shoes. It's not a coincidence you have to remind me to take, yeah. off, take off my shoes. Because we're on holy ground. Yes, sir. And so um, I'm just so excited that the men, because we now have a, a new group. Because the men come and go through the program. So now we've got a fresh eight or nine guys that will be just excited. And, and you know, and, and I say this in closing, you know, the struggles I went through in the last day, my mommy took her last breath in my arms and dying from cancer. She said one thing. She said, be good, Bam Bam. Hmm. And I didn't understand what she meant. And when she left, I just wanted to commit suicide. She was my God. She was my everything. And through that journey, when I ended up going in jail, I realized, and I think I told you this, that it was my turn to stand up and be a man. Amen. I realized the day that I don't live with the pain of my mom passing because I was her baby and she had to pass for me to become the man I am today. And for all the work and all the love I give to people and all the things that we do in this school, it's just how my mom was in the community in the, in the Lafayette projects. She gave everybody a home. She made sure one, one pot of beans was would feed the whole neighborhood. Regardless of what, she never not shown a connection and love for someone else. And I think that's what the Word of God has allowed me to be able to do. I don't have to be a killer or a warrior to beat people mm -hmm. up. I can be a man of love and I can shed tears and I can do all of it because the real warrior is one who comes in humility. I mean, would you agree? Yes. Uh, there was a great book that I read years ago that really influenced me called The Tender Warrior. I mean, I had a warrior mentality, but it was like yours, it was messed up. Yes, Anger management, you know, doing it through sports, football, and yes, all of that. So I get pats on the back when I really should have gotten hammered. Yes, um, so I had to learn how to, you know, the Lord says, come to me and, and I will give you rest for I am meek and humble of heart and the humility. So that's something that the men have to learn because they're used to being on their own, doing stuff for themselves. So now, not only are they trying to learn a new way, but then they've got to interact with other men that they didn't yeah, know. Right, See, right. that's another yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. bringing them here yeah. kind of gives them a focus, and they're all in this together, yes. and they're still talking about it. Right. And they're wearing their, um, I should have worn my sweatshirt. Yeah, I got right. a sweatshirt, a hoodie. Love those hoodies. It's for your mindset. So um, yeah, it's just really, really exciting how we're going to how we're going to go from here. Yeah. We, I mean, we can think we see where God's taking us, but I mean, we're close. <clears throat> and that's what I say. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not intelligent to comprehend all the things that's happening in my life, but I do remember one thing, and we, and we end with this. It says <coughs> ego. When you spell, when you really look at how, what it really means, it means easing God out. So every time you're thinking about that ego, is about easing God out. We don't want to ease God out. You know what I'm saying? We want good only direction. We want to follow his direction and follow his path and just surrender. Faith is believing in the things unseen. Is that correct? Well, yes, and then when you were talking about your aunt, I was thinking how she was passing the torch. Yes, and I thought of this scripture, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies to itself, or to, and we're talking about a person, that's what happened to you. Yes, you die to yourself, so, which was edging God out or easing God out. Yes, sir. Yes, and now, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So, uh, he, he's, he's just you're doing a marvelous job. Well, thank you. Yes. Warrior mindset. Oos. Gotta give him a oos. Oos. <laughs> I'm still learning. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get a hug? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir.